Chapter 2081, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 8. The weapon spirits mobilized by Soul Slayer immediately charged into the battlefield, coordinating with the human spirits as they moved to surround the beast spirits. Soul Slayer, are you really going to help Wuju? Flame Dragon asked as it stared at Soul Slayer in disbelief. Although Flame Dragon was not on all that familiar terms with Soul Slayer, but as the leader of the weapon spirits, how could it possibly fall for Wuji's ploy so easily? Soul Slayer then replied in an indignant voice, I am not helping him, but helping the weapon spirits ourselves. You beast spirits are so numerous in number and have been so used to being in a superior position and you have been in that position for far too long. The weapon spirits are no longer willing to lie low and play second fiddle where the weapon spirits shall now finally rise. Soul Slayer's voice had just fallen and it immediately leapt to fly straight towards the battlefield. Flame Dragon cursed and immediately followed after. For Soul Slayer to be able to become the weapon spirits leader, its might was not to be doubted. If it was allowed to fight the beast spirits, the resulting death toll might not be something that Flame Dragon would be able to take. Wuju stood before his chair as he watched the weapon spirits and human spirits push the beast spirits into a corner. His eyes were lit with an excited fiery light and everything that was happening before his eyes made it impossible for him to hold back from laughing out aloud. With the weapon spirits on their side, the human spirits no longer had to fear. They all then charged straight at the beast spirits with a loud battle cry with the weapon spirits beside them. To protect the spiritual bear, all the beast spirits let out a heaven-shaking roar. Faced with a combined army that far exceeded their numbers, the beast spirits did not show the slightest hesitation as they met the onslaught of the enemies pouncing right upon them. In a blink, human spirits, beast spirits and weapon spirits tangled themselves up before the first serene spirit tower, battle cries, roars, and the unique clanging of metal intertwined together in the air. The battle among the spirits had no grisly blood, nor was there the nauseating stench of blood, but it still quaked the hearts of people all the same. The beast spirits that were shredded apart let out their final roars, holding firmly onto their beliefs till the last moment, even when their spirit souls dissipated. They did not turn their backs on their spiritual bear. With that belief in their hearts, close to a thousand beast spirits held their ground to slash at their enemies, continuously using their fangs, their claws, to tear through every enemy that sought to get close to the spiritual bear. The bloodless battlefield, was however still suffocatingly stirring and tragic. The spirit souls scattering and dispersing into the air quietly, silent and without a sound as they disappeared from the world not even able to leave behind a corpse. Flame Dragon blocked Soul Slayer's way forward, and the Beast Spirit's leader and the Weapon Spirits then commenced their epic battle. One side was fighting to defend their spiritual leader, and the other side was seeking to gain might for a greater future. This was a battle that belonged to the two of them, though bitter, but they were fighting strongly, firm in their beliefs. Within the chaos of battle, June Wuxi directed the Black Beast to charge and kill off the human spirits and weapon spirits lunging at them. The Black Beast opened its jaws wide, tearing and biting through all the enemies before it and devouring them. The Power Spirit Devour This was an unique ability of the Black Beasts, where it was able to devour any spirit body. The Black Beast morphed into a black-colored whirlwind, like a wraith that swept over the battlefield, and wherever it passed, it left behind a trail of spirits who had yet to completely dispersed, to finally scatter into the wind. June Wuxi had pulled Nalan Shan out from his dangerous spot in the first instance, thinking to open the soul binding chains on Nalan Shan's hands. It's no use. Without the key, the soul binding chains would Nalan Shan was just merely halfway through his sentence when he saw June Wuxi use a fine and tiny little hairpin to open the soul binding chains lock. With a clatter, the soul binding chains around Nalan Shan's wrists then fell to land right by his feet. Chapter 2082 Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 9 Nalan Shan's eyes were wide as he stared, looking in disbelief at the soul binding chains that had been opened so easily, incredulity filling up in his eyes. Just like that unlocked. Can you still move? Jun Wuxi's attention was not on Nalan Shan's surprise her gaze fixed upon the battlefield. Sure. Wuxi. Thank you Nalan Shan said, 
highly excited, June Wuxi glanced at the soul-binding chains that had fallen, and the corners of her mouth curled up with a playful smile. No need to thank me. Lock picking was taught to me by someone else and if you want to thank, then thank that imbecile called Shen Yang Xiao. Upon saying that, the figure of June Wuxi flashed and she had charged straight into the battlefield. Nalan Shan did not even have the time to think who Shen Yang Xiao was as when he saw the intense battle, his gaze had immediately turned towards Wu Ji who had a gleeful smile upon his face. With a leap, he lunged suddenly towards Wu Ju. Wu Ju. Nalan Shan called out in a loud shout. Wu Ju lifted an eyebrow as he looked at Nalan Shan who had come charging right before him and he laughed lightly indifferently. What? You want revenge? Nalan Shan's fists were tightly clenched as he said through gritted teeth, I am going to clean up the sect on master's behalf today. You think you can do it? Question mark you do not have it in you. Nalan Shan, I'll advise you to know your place. You have never been my match. And if you obediently submit yourself to me, I can forget things in the past. But if you insist on seeking death, I shall then grant you your wish. Wu Ju said with a sneering laugh. Save your nonsense. Between you and me today, only one will live. Nalan Shan was no longer willing to hear Wu Ju spout his nonsense, and he leapt straight at Wu Ju in a lunge. Wu Ju sneered and parried Nalan Shan's attack, once fellow disciples but now fallen to such a stage that they were fighting to the death. The entire battlefield was one big mess of chaos, and there were no longer any so-called spectators around them. The battle royale of the three races, reached an intensity never seen before. The human spirits and weapon spirits won out by a notch with their superior numbers, driving the beast spirits back step by step, but the beast spirits were steadfast in holding their line, defending with their lives to keep the enemies out of the spiritual bear's perimeter of safety, refusing to budge another single step. With mournful wails, beast spirits turned into puffs of green smoke one after another, disappearing without leaving a trace behind. Their comrades did not even have time to mourn or feel sorrowful about their disappearance as they were being overwhelmed by the endless waves of enemies that engulfed them. Brownie gave out a roar of unease, as he saw with its own eyes its fellow beasts disappearing into nothing in order to defend it, its heart growing extremely anxious. Disappearing. That's right, spirits did not die, but they disappeared. From the moment when their flesh bodies died, they turned into spirits where they either reincarnated and were reborn, or they came to the spirit world and continued to live in spirit state. But the moment that their spirits scattered and dispersed, their existence were then completely erased. Without a drop of blood, without leaving behind a corpse, as they leave the world they were so familiar with, never to appear ever again. Disappear, a word that was more frightening than death. When they disappear, it meant that they would bid goodbye to everything in this world forever. Let me go. I can kill them. Brownie had wanted to break free from the Cheetah and the others who were holding him back, but they had dug their claws in to stop him, refusing to budge. You cannot go. Why not? My fellow beasts are shedding their blood for me. Am I supposed to just hide behind them like a turtle with its head inside its shell and live ignobly? I refuse to. Brownie roared in rage. The cheetah held on to Brownie's leg and said almost pleadingly, You cannot go. If we are to witness with our own eyes having lost you, it would be a fate worse than death for us. Their sacrifice is for the sake of ensuring your safety so do not let their sacrifice become a joke. Chapter 2083, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 10. The spiritual bear was stunned. The beast spirits were sacrificing themselves to protect it but it tormented its heart greatly. If its survival was made possible only through the loss of countless lives among the beast spirits, how was it going to be able to live with itself in future? Do not be rash. The Cheetah is right. Even if you are to strike at them, it will not bring that big an effect. If we end up being unable to protect you, it would not make a difference whether you fight or not. What's most important is that you are protected, as only when you still stand, the beast spirits will stand with you. June Wuxi said as she appeared beside Brownie in a flash. Brownie stood as the faith and belief of the beast spirits and hence, it must not fall. At least before all the beast spirits have fallen, Brownie must not come to the slightest harm. Brownie clenched its jaws tightly together, tears streaming out of its eyes as they fell, 
to soak up into its thick fur. Helplessness and grief twisted up in its heart. It did not want to be so weak, but it had no choice but to continue to stand here feeling like a coward. It understood that what Jun Wuxi said was right, as he was Wuju's target, and the moment it charged into the battlefield, Wuju would spare no effort to have all the human spirits and weapon spirits turn all their attacks onto him. At that time, regardless of what kind of powers it possessed, it would be impossible for it to remain standing. When that happens, Wuju would seize the chance to capture it and all the sacrifices of the beast spirits would have been in vain. I won't go, I won't go anymore Brownie suddenly took a step back and said, it sighs sorrowful as it saw the beast spirits paying no heed to their own safety, to battle the human spirits and weapon spirits, and every minute and every second that passed, tore and tormented his heart. Cheetah heaved a sigh of relief as it looked gratefully at Jun Wuxi. Jun Wuxi did not say anything more but just charged into the fray anew. Out on the battlefield, Poison Ivy went all out with the power of his vines. Supple and strong vines swept through a wide area, taking down countless human spirits, where only the sharp blades of the weapon spirits could cut through them, the broken segments falling to the ground but Poison Ivy did not care in the least. Drunk Lotus and Poppy were summoned, and the two killing machines joined hands to drive back a large wave of the enemy. With the participation of the three plant spirits into the battle, a subtle change came over the battlefield. The powerful might of the plant spirits was something only the weapon spirits were able to stand against, and some other plant spirits who were merely spectating suddenly looked on in puzzlement at Poison Ivy, Poppy and drunk Lotus within the battlefield. These three plant spirits, held great fame throughout the lines of plant spirits and if they were to raise a call to arms, a number of plant spirits would be sure to answer their call. But they had not done that, as they had been just like Brownie, unwilling to pull their fellow comrades into danger. But, even when they did not call out, it did not mean that the plant spirits would just sit back and watch. Dang, you dare to touch my boss Poison Ivy. I'll fight you with everything I have. A youth who had tender thorns all over his body exclaimed as he charged into battle. With a great leap, the thorns on his body immediately turned hard and sharp, and like a scattering of rain. The thorns all pierced into the bodies of the human spirits. Hey hey hey, isn't that drunk Lotus? Why has he suddenly come back to join in the fun? A lady with the bewitching body said with a smile as she watched drunk Lotus charging right into the thick of battle, her enchanting emerald green eyes flashing with a malicious glint. Bullying our dear drunk Lotus, unpardonable. As she spoke, the lady slipped herself into the battlefield her slender jade-like hand sweeping over the handle of a weapon spirit and opened her palms for an instant before clamping them shut together, to turn into a carnivorous man-eating plant with endless serrated teeth. In one gulp, the weapon spirit was swallowed whole. This lady has gone vegetarian for a very long time, why must you force me to break my vow of abstinence? The bewitching lady's face was mournful but her hands were already reaching towards a human spirit at the side. Chomp apostrophe, off with the head in one bite, chapter 2084, face slapping of the ecstatic rapture palm, 11, when did that fella poppy come back, to think that he didn't even come say hello to this great lord me, all of you don't even touch him, Aye, aye, aye. you are still gonna fight, Dewey, don't you know that only your great lord here is the only one that can beat him up, question mark a handsome muscle bound man shouted, and charged right onto the battlefield, his powerful limbs strong enough to crush all the enemies that came near him, the sharp blades slashing upon his body only making dull sounds, unable to hurt him at all. In a blink, having just those few plant spirits join the fray brought about a huge turn in the tide of battle. The number of plant spirits had always been the fewest in the spirit world but just pull any single one of them out and they were all be demons who possess powers that could stand against a hundred. With them participating in the battle, the vigor of the human spirits and weapon spirits were quickly subdued, and the beast spirits finally got themselves some breathing space. Poppy, getting your face all battered and bruised by a bunch of such useless trash wouldn't look good on you as you know that the dumb looking face of yours can only be punched up by your great lord here. The towering man said as he charged to come beside Poppy, laughing haughtily. Poppy was slightly taken aback, and he could not help but laughed a bit to laugh, 
but before he could say anything, another human spirit was already charging towards him. Wada. The man delivered a heavy punch right onto the human spirit, making his sea stars. Don't get distracted, once there's a chance, I will bash you up as well. The man harumphed derisively. Poppy shrugged his shoulders and replied, you wouldn't have that opportunity. And he embarked on another killing spree. The situation on the battlefield took a turn for the better and Jun Wuxi was finally able to pull herself away. She spotted the figure of Jiang Yunlong among the chaotic battle and suddenly went charging over. As Wu Ju's first disciple, among all the human spirits, Jiang Yunlong's power was inferior only to Wu Ju, and he had already attained the realm of spirit out flare. He carried out wanton slaughter upon the battlefield arrogantly as he reached his hand out to throttle a wolf type beast spirit, his eyes filled with cruelty, an animal who does not know its place. He tugged sharply with his hands, to tear the wolf type beast spirit apart into halves, the broken spirit of the wolf type beast spirit dissipating in his hands as the edges of his mouth curled into a bloodthirsty arc. Jiang Yun Long. Suddenly hearing his own name, Jiang Yun Long immediately turned his head and tried to focus his eyes. Before he could even see the person approaching clearly, he saw a black shadow hurtling right towards his face and he immediately raised his arms to block. A powerful kick struck Jiang Yun Long right upon his arm where even he was pushed back a few steps from the power of the strike. Jun Wuxi. Jiang Yunlong narrowed his eyes. When he saw Jun Wuxi that had appeared before him, he gritted his teeth and cursed in a low voice. Haven't you always wanted to catch me? I am standing here right now, so you can give it a try. Jun Wuxi said with a sneering smile her eyes haughty. Jiang Yunlong snorted contemptuously and he clenched his fists tight as he stared at Jun Wuxi whose tricky escapes had caused him to suffer quite a bit of admonishment. Fiery rage then shot up with a swoosh in his heart. Jun Wuxi, you have come courting death here. I have not taken the time out to deal with you yet and here you have come delivering yourself up to me. I will make you regret everything that you have done. Jiang Yunlong said and then suddenly pushed his power of the spirit to flare out from his body, as he stared at Jun Wuxi arrogantly. I will soon make you realize your own stupidity. Spirit out flare is not something mere trash like you would be able to stand against but unfortunately you already do not have the chance to regret it. Spirit out flare. The corners of Jun Wuxi's mouth curled up derisively. She stretched out a hand and grey mist immediately swirled around her body. She raised her chin up slightly to look at the arrogant Jiang Yun Long indifferently and said in such an highly aggravating tone, Is it all that great? Chapter 2085, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 12 Jiang Yun Long was stunned as he looked at the power of the spirit spreading out in a flare around Jun Wuxi's body. He just could not believe his own eyes. This lass had actually also attained the realm of spirit at flare. Question mark. How is that possible? Question mark. If he was not seeing it with his own eyes, even if you beat him to death, he would not believe that Jun Wuxi could actually achieve the state of spirit at flare. It must be known that among all the human spirits throughout the entire spirit world, only four people had been able to reach such a state. Jiang Yunlong was considered to be the youngest among them but had also taken more than ten years to do that. He had originally possessed a rather good amount of power and he had further cultivated diligently in the Serene Spirit Tower's twelfth level absorbing the most robust power of the spirit before he was able to gain his current powers. But no matter how you looked at it, Jun Wuxi could not have cultivated for many years where Jiang Yunlong still remembered clearly what Meng Yi Liang had told him before. The first time that he had seen Jun Wuxi, Jun Wuxi had still been a translucent new spirit soul. Although she had gone into the serene spirit tower for a few moments and her powers had increased a little, but she had not ever stepped into the Serene Spirit Tower again after that, and according to what Jun Wuxi had said, she had been cultivating in the tranquil dream forest, so how could she achieve such results? Jiang Yunlong was not willing to believe, nor did he dare to believe that, but the power of the spirit flaring out from Jun Wuxi currently was constantly reminding Jiang Yunlong of that cruel truth. How is this? Jun Wuxi asked with a sneer. Jiang Yunlong clenched his jaws tight as he looked at the contemptuous smile on Jun Wuxi's face, 
like such powers were not even worth mentioning in her eyes, and all his pompous arrogance was all just a big joke. The spirit out flare that he had been so proud of, had been achieved by her so effortlessly. That was a fact that made Jiang Yun Long feel as if he had been slapped across the face several tens of times and his cheeks were just burning with stinging pain. Nothing great. No matter what method you used to do it, real spirit out flare is unquestionable. I will make you realize the difference. Jiang Yun Long said, trying to sound brave. Jun Wuxi however, could not be bothered at all with his feeble attempt at struggling. In the next instant, Jiang Yun Long roared and charged towards Jun Wuxi. The faint smile at the corners of Jun Wuxi's mouth immediately disappeared for it to be replaced by chilling murder that spread in her eyes. The two powerful pugilists who had attained Spirit Out Flare then tangled up in battle. Spirit Out Flare, had long come to symbol supremacy among the human spirits. Jiang Yun Long was at that level, but the other human spirits did not possess the same kind of power. However, on Jun Wuxi's side, people who had achieved Spirit Out Flow had another five people. Yao Chu was weaving in and out throughout the battlefield having a ball of a time fighting. Ever since he had taken the spirit transformation elixir where his spirit power had been sealed and he had come to the spirit world, his initial weakness and frailty had made his suffer all kinds of a grievance. When he had seen Brownie being surrounded outside the spiritual spirit loft and was about to be captured, he had been powerless to save it but had to rely on the yin-yang bear for the rescue. All these aggrievement had accumulated and built up in Kiao Chu's chest. Having finally regained power once again today, he was able to vent his frustration. He was like a runaway wild stallion, maniacally fighting off the enemy, the power of the spirit swirling outside his body deterring every human spirit that came close to him. These human spirits who followed Wuju, were already people considered to hold great power, or they would not have gained Wuju's acknowledgement. They had always prided themselves as the elites of the human spirits but before Kiao Chu and his companions, these human spirits could not do anything but to cry. How could anyone play such a big joke? The first moment they struck, they immediately brought out six demonic monsters capable of spirit out flare. To their knowledge, only four among all the human spirits were capable of reaching that realm but Jun Wuxi had so casually pulled out five of them with a flick of her sleeves. Exclamation mark. Watching Giao Chu run amok, Hu Ya and the others embarked on a free killing spree and the enemy human spirits just wanted to weep. Chapter 2086, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 13, Watching Giao Chu run amok. Hu Ya and the others embarked on a free killing spree and the enemy human spirits just wanted to weep. How were they expected to fight? A bunch of human spirits with rather good powers, battling several monstrous grade pugilists even if they dragged it out to tire them, there were still a horde of beast spirits eyeing them predatorily at the side. They would definitely be bashed till there was nothing left. Initially, they still had the advantage of numbers, but with the addition of the highly powerful plant spirits. The human spirits immediately felt that the situation had taken a turn for the worse. Though their weapon spirits were not weak, but they were basically smaller in size, and the double-headed bone snake was the most natural enemy against weapon spirits, its unmatchedly steel hard bones all over its body not chipping off a single bit when the sharp blades hacked upon it. A large number of weapon spirits were swarmed around the double-headed bone snake which drew away a large part of the fire away from the battle. Among the six companions, Fan Zuo was the only one who possessed a weapon ring spirit. The sword of annihilation in his hand was unrivaled, and any weapon spirit that went against them had only come to face the fate of breaking into pieces under Fan Zuo's slashes. Moreover with the addition of the brawny and muscular plant spirit with a hide and bones like steel, just these few entities alone had drawn the attention of quite a lot of the weapon spirits, greatly reducing the amount of reinforcements that could support the human spirits. The weapon spirits were all not that strong in their ability to think, where they basically were very much one-tracked mind, not giving up once they set their eyes on a target, which just drew more and more weapon spirits to them, and they were just not unable to take down their target which further drew away their might. When the human spirits saw the weapon spirits fighting so unintelligently, all of them wanted to curse all their mothers. 
but their current situation would not allow them to have an acrimonious falling out with the weapon spirits at that moment so they could only choose to silently curse at their allies who were dumb as pigs as they themselves stood in resistance against the beast spirits. In actual fact, compared to the weapon spirits, the beast spirits would have been much more suitable allies and that was the cry that was rising within the minds of all the human spirits. However, all of them had no other choice. Wu Ju was held back by Nalan Shan, unable to go into the main battlefield. Nalan Shan's powers were in fact basically inferior to Wu Ju's, but this time, Nalan Shan's heart was filled with so much hatred and vengeance where he had embraced the determination and resolved to fight this battle to his death. Every stroke he executed was pushing ahead in an attack, without putting up any kind of defense, paying no heed to the fact that his body had become battered and worn under Wuji's strikes. The blazing fire in his eyes did not dim, but burned more ferociously under the stimulation of pain, pushing him to execute an even more maniacal attack. A man who pays no regard to his life, against a man who had so much on his mind, it already created a great chasm of a disparity from that difference in mindset. Nalan Shan, you're really courting your own death, because we had been fellow disciples for so many years, I have shown you mercy in so many instances but you still do not realize what's good for yourself, do you really want me to have you slaughtered? Question mark Wu Ju was gradually being pushed into anger by Nalan Shan and the viciousness in his eyes was growing more and more intense. He had not wanted to bother wasting his time on a moron like Nalan Shan but he was being hounded doggedly by Nalan Shan, unable to extradite himself. Keep your deceitful lies to yourself would you? I already know what kind of person you are and I will not believe a single word you say. You've committed such an unpardonable crime of deceiving our master that destroyed the ancestor's name, I will never let you off scot-free. Today, it's either I kill you, or you will have to kill me and there will not be a third possibility. Nalan Shan's body was covered with wounds and even if he was not Wu Ju's match, he would still not retreat by even half a step, not to mention the amount of hatred there was between him and Wu Ju, but just by way the current circumstances stood, he knew he must not let Wu Ju enter the battle. Wu Ju's powers seemed to have surpassed that of the previous spirit master at his peak. If Wu Ju was allowed to appear on the battlefield, it was not known what kind of a massacre he would come to create. Pig-headed stubborn fool. Then I shall grant you your wish. Wu Ju said viciously, the flare of the power of the spirit shrouding around his body suddenly swelling up. Chapter 2087, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 14. Nalan Shan looked on in shock at Wu Ju's sudden explosive increase in his power of the spirit his eyes filling up with surprise. He could clearly feel that the power of the spirit in Wuju was currently rising at an astounding speed. Nalan Shan had not thought that Wuju would still hide a portion of his powers. By the time he discovered it, it was already too late. Wuju's power of the spirit increased by a fold and he morphed into a streak of black shadow that disappeared before Nalan Shan's eyes. Nalan Shan raised up his guard but an intense pain was suddenly spreading from his back. Fool, you are just seeking your own death. Wu Ju's sinister voice rose up from behind Nalan Shan. Nalan Shan lowered his head and looked down at the arm that had pierced right through his chest, his eyes wide with shock. Wu Ju then pushed Nalan Shan away, and the heavily wounded Nalan Shan was in a state of panic as a hole had opened up in his chest where the flesh around it was gradually turning into dust in dissipation at a speed visible to the eye. His spirit soul critically wounded. What welcomed Nalan Shan could only be to disappear. Wu Ju looked at Nalan Shan with contempt, a foot stepping upon Nalan Shan's head. Nalan Shan, I've said you were foolish, and that's exactly what you are. If you've pledged your loyalty to me, what you could have gotten would definitely be beyond anything you could have imagined. You clearly had that path open to you but you've instead chosen the path that leads to your death. Nalan Shan had fallen unmoving onto the ground and his spirit that was quickly disappearing away caused him to not even have the strength to open his mouth, the feeling of emptiness that was coming to engulf over his entire body telling him of his fate that was moving towards certain death, his eyes stared in regret and aggrievement, unwilling to disappear just like that. Wu Ju did not bother with Nalan Shan anymore as from what he saw, 
Nalan Shan already did not have much time left. Would you? You actually dared to! Exclamation mark. Brownie who had been kept right at the back had its eyes fixed upon the entire battlefield throughout. At the very moment that it saw Nalan Shan fell, its mind had immediately exploded with a whirl. Heaven scorching rage and torrential hatred weaved up in Brownie's heart, burning away the very last vestiges of its sensibility. Would you looked at the furious Brownie? and suddenly broke out in laughter. What? You can't bear for him to leave. What a pity. If you had not run away in the first place, my junior would not have died, and your fellow beasts would not have to suffer all this turmoil. All of this had been caused by you. Wuju said venomously. Brownie was so angry its sharp fangs were quivering. The cheetah beside it cursed inwardly. Brownie and Nalan Shan had grown incredibly close and having it see with its own eyes Wuju wounding Nalan Shan so severely while hearing Wuju's taunting words, it was feared that things would surely grow even worse. Wuju, I am going to kill you! Exclamation mark. Brownie roared with every ounce of strength it could summon and the spiritual bear's rage stirred up a hurricane to sweep through the battlefield. Wuju's eyes then flashed with a gleeful glint. He stood the remaining in his spot, raising up his foot to repeatedly stomp upon Nalan Shan's head as he looked tauntingly at Brownie. Kill me, you, you're merely a prisoner of mine. If I can imprison you once, then I will be able to capture you a second time. Anyone who seeks to rescue you will be killed by me. Not just Nalan Shan, but that bunch of foolish and laughable fellow beasts of yours as well. Not a single one of you must even think of leaving here alive today. Brownie completely lost it as any remaining rationality was burned up, without a single bit left. It charged right through the cheetah's attempt to block it and charged straight towards the haughty and cruel Wuji with a mighty roar. June Wuxi. Stop the spiritual bear. The cheetah was knocked away by Brownie as it watched Brownie charging away where it was about to reach Wuj and it quickly roared out in panic. Jun Wuxi who was battling Jiang Yunlong suddenly heard the cheetah's roar and she turned her eyes to look, only to see Brownie charging mindlessly straight towards Wuju. That's not good. Chapter 2088, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 15 Seeing Brownie coming straight towards him. Wuju's eyes were shining with a gleeful glint. Nalan Shan who had fallen to the ground creased his brows together and wanted to stop him but found that he could not open his mouth at all. Wuju, I am going to have your life. Brownie leapt up, its enormous body pouncing right at Wuju. Wuju lifted his head up and looked smilingly at Brownie that was leaping straight at him. He turned on his heel suddenly and his slender figure disappeared from right before Brownie. Brownie's eyes flared wide, and the moment its massive body landed, multiple lengths of soul-binding chains shot out from the chair that Wuju had been sitting in earlier. The soul-binding chains fitted with hooks were fast as lightning, the sharp hooks immediately piercing through Brownie's thick fur into flesh. Tens of the huge hooks were deeply lodged in Brownie's body in many spots excruciating pain from the flesh pierced causing brownie to let out a heaven quaking roar ha 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 fool what a great big fool exclamation mark the figure of wooj appeared on the chair once again with both feet standing upon it his mouth laughing out madly in glee several tens of those soul binding chains held brownie helplessly trapped constantly dragging Brownie to go towards Wuju. Nalan Shan's consciousness was gradually becoming fuzzy and under his increasingly clouded vision, he only saw Brownie roaring in rage helplessly as the soul-binding chains pierced it all over its body, to be forcibly dragged along while it dug its claws into the ground, but was no match for the pull of the soul-binding chains. Brownie was dragged bit by bit forward leaving behind a trail of deep claw marks in the ground. Spiritual bear! Exclamation mark. The cheetah saw with its own eyes that Brownie was snared in a trap and it immediately went charging forward like it had lost its mind. Stop them! Wuju lifted his eyes, and said coldly, when they saw that the spiritual bear had been captured. The morale of the human spirits and the weapon spirits immediately shot up and under the command of Wuju, they joined together and blocked off the way forward for the beast spirits and plant spirits completely. Let the spiritual bear go. The cheetah was charging forward maniacally as it leapt past all the enemies who came to block its way. With its great agility and a leap off its hind legs, it leapt up into the air, 
its sharp claws stepping over the enemies before it, as its momentum brought it hurtling straight towards Wuju. Foolish weakling. The corners of Wuju's mouth curled up into a cruel smile, and he suddenly raised his hands, to drive both hands right through the cheetah's chest. Roar! Exclamation mark A mournful wail poured out from the cheetah's jaws. Its eyes were bloodshot as the excruciating pain almost caused its consciousness to almost disappear instantly. The cheetah fought with that last sliver of consciousness in its mind, ignoring Wuji's hands that had plunged through its chest but to surge itself further forward with its jaws wide open, and clamped its fangs right onto Wuji's shoulder. Intense pain caused Wuji's brows to furrow up tightly together, and enraged. He pulled his arms open wide. No! Exclamation mark Brownie's eyes were wide as they stared, where he then let out a roar of despair. The cheetah was torn into two halves under Wuji's hands in an instant, that lean muscular body torn right through as it was flung in the air, to turn into specks of sparkly stars, that fell upon Brownie's face. Brownie's irises quaked violently, as it looked at the cheetah's body gradually disappearing. Roar! Exclamation mark. The heaven-shaking bear's roar resonated in everyone's ears. June Wuxi had witnessed with her eyes Nalan Shan being severely wounded. Brownie being captured, and the cheetah disappearing forever for the belief it held in its heart. Her heart that had been calm for quite a while quaked intensely. That bear's roar of utter sorrow and despair had rocked every single part of her soul. Idiot. With just a bunch of animals like them and you want to strike at my master? You really overestimated yourselves. June Wuxi, do you see it? This is the fate you will face by going against us. The spiritual bear has been caught and Nalan Shan will disappear very soon. After that, it will then be your turn. Jiang Yun Long said as he looked at Jun Wuxi maliciously, Chapter 2089, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 16. Jun Wuxi's gaze slowly turned back, the cold clear pair of eyes not looking at Jiang Yun Long. Jiang Yun Long thought that Jun Wuxi had been scared out of her wits and he started laughing even more haughtily. All of you, have just succeeded, in getting me riled up. Those soft words came out slowly from June Wuxi's mouth, her slightly lowered gaze and the long luscious lashes hiding the fiery light in her eyes. Jiang Yun Long's brows creased up, not understanding why June Wuxi would say that. June Wuxi then raised her hand up without a word, and tugged off the tiny little silver stud from her earlobe. I'll advise you to not put up any more of such meaningless struggle. You'll have to die anyway this ends as there is no other way out for all of you. Jiang Yun Long was still being haughty and arrogant. Nalan Shan was about to die and the spiritual bear had been captured by his master. It wouldn't be long before the human spirit reinforcements would arrive and all who stood resisting them before the first serene spirit tower here today would be walking right into death. While Jiang Yun Long was prattling on incessantly, a silver flash of light suddenly manifested right before his eyes. The intensity of that light was so blindingly bright that all the spirits before the first serene spirit tower could not even open their eyes, and when Wu Jihu was caught up in glee saw that sudden brilliant light, his eyes widened and shock rose up in his eyes. That is the brilliance of the face of Selvon. Jiang Yun Long raised his hand up to shield his eyes, and when that brilliance faded away, he then lowered his arm. A silver figure suddenly stood before his eyes. Jun Wuxi's body was suddenly covered by a suit of armor. There was a resplendent glowing luster upon that armor, that fully covered up Jun Wuxi, with only a pair of icy cold eyes showing. What Jiang Yun Long stared in astonishment at the armor clad Jun Wuxi, a feeling of unease immediately swirling in his heart. Jun Wuxi did not give Jiang Yun Long any time to even think as she used the overwhelming might of the face of Selvan to morph into a silver streak of light, moving so fast that Jiang Yun Long could not react at all. Jiang Yun Long was completely flustered. He was no longer able to even catch sight of Jun Wuxi's shadow. An excruciating amount of pain suddenly spread from his abdomen and he lowered his head down to look in shock. A silver sword of light was currently being thrust through his abdomen and the unimaginable pain was spreading out from the edges of the wound to his entire body, 
causing him to tremble violently in helplessness. No, don't fear Phil Jiang Yun Long completely. He just could not believe that the armor clad Jun Wuxi had merely executed one single stroke and she had pierced her blade right through his body. The terror of disappearing eternally turned Jiang Yun Long's face white. Fear like he had never felt before was almost bursting out of his heart. He looked up in pure terror at Jun Wuxi his eyes longing so hard to be able to live. The light sword that Jun Wuxi held in her hand then lifted. Ugh! His final wail then disappeared out of Jiang Yun Long's mouth. The blinding sword of light slicing Jiang Yun Long into two halves in an instant. The haughty Jiang Yun Long was cut through his midsection, the two halves of his body crashing heavily to the ground as the dissipating dust gradually turned into specks of stars, falling into the soil to disappear completely. From afar, Wu Ju was stunned to see Jiang Yun Long being slaughtered. He stared with his eyes fixed upon that silver figure, an intense emotion rising up within his heart. The face of Selvon. Why would it appear here? Question mark. Wu Ju drew in a deep breath, and immediately ordered for men to push the in cage he had prepared beforehand. Brownie who had soul binding chains dragging behind it was then thrown right into the metal cage. Chapter 2090, Face Slapping of the Ecstatic Rapture Palm, 17. Quickly bring the spiritual bear away. Wu Ju said coldly. Several human spirits immediately wheeled the metal cage walking towards the back. Brownie who was imprisoned in that metal cage was charging against the solid cage continuously but the soul binding chains had sealed its power of the spirit and mere brute strength was not going to be able to break out of those restraints. Roar. Brownie had both its paws stretched out through the bars of the metal cage, the direction those paws were reaching out to was towards the weakened Nalan Shan who had fallen to the ground, whose half-opened eyes had lost the light shining in them from before, reflecting the image of Brownie gradually becoming more distant in them. After June Wuxi sliced up Jiang Yun Long, she immediately charged at Wu Ju. Wu Ju seemed to be prepared as power of the spirit flared out in a surge from his entire body, meeting Jun Wuxi's charge straight on with a great leap. In the instant that the two of them engaged, the figure of Jun Wuxi suddenly flashed. Wu Ju did not manage to pull his forward momentum back in time as he lurched forward a few steps, and in the instant that his feet landed, he immediately turned his head back to look at Jun Wuxi. He then saw, up there in the air, that the Selvan's armor on Jun Wuxi had suddenly sprouted a bunch of feathery silver wings. Those wings were carrying her at an extremely fast speed, flying right past Wu Ju and straight towards Brownie who was being gradually pulled away. The human spirits who were pushing the metal cage to shift it away suddenly noticed Jun Wuxi descending upon them from up in the air and they were so shocked their whole bodies trembled. They did everything they could as they attempted to push the metal cage further away, but their legs could not possibly compare to the speed of those silver wings. At the moment that Jun Wuxi was diving down in descent, the silver wings on her back suddenly blew up a hurricane the powerful wind immediately blowing away all the human spirits around the metal cage. Thunk! Jun Wuxi's feet landed on the top of the cage and the silver boots struck a clearinging sound against the metal on the cage. Several human spirits fell to the ground and they all looked up fearfully at the saintly silver figure standing atop the cage, the armor seeming giving out a glowing luster naturally, making their hearts quiver. To not dare to go against her. Jun Wuxi struck the metal cage under her lightly with a foot and a series of deep quakes rocked through the entire metal cage. In an instant, the incredibly strong metal cage shattered with a loud crack, breaking at every inch as the pieces scattered all over the floor. Jun Wuxi hovered in the air with her silver wings and in the instant that Brownie was freed of its restraints, Jun Wuxi's wings flapped. Countless silver feathers shot out a multitude of sharp blades, that struck unerringly as they broke off the soul binding chains on Brownie's body. Brownie looked on in astonishment as the bonds on its body was being broken off bit by bit. It raised up its head in surprise, to look at Jun Wuxi. Jun Wuxi raised a hand. A little all and a piece of paper then fell from her hand where Brownie quickly caught them. Carve that out around Nalan Shan. Jun Wuxi said. Brownie stared in shock at the piece of paper in its paws. The spirit reinforcement runes on the paper formed a circle. The circle of runes were not unfamiliar to Brownie as the return of its powers had been achieved with this. All right. 
Brownie immediately replied, seeing that, June Wuxi did not tarry a moment longer but turned herself around to go charging towards Wuju. Brownie could not care less about the wounds on its own body as its four limbs carried it to sprint at a fiery speed towards Nalan Shan. It used its front paws to drag Nalan Shan to a slightly safer place as its two paws clumsily held the little all that was smaller than one of its claws trying its hardest to slowly carve out the spirit reinforcement runes around Nalan Shan bit by bit, according to what was shown on the piece of paper. Don't die, I beg you, don't die as Brownie diligently carved out the runes, it pleaded in a rather choked voice. It really did not want anyone to die because of itself anymore. Nalan Shan's spirit was growing weaker and weaker, already almost transparent. He struggled to open his eyes, to look at Brownie's dear streaked face, where he finally could no longer fight off the exhaustion and his eyes closed. 